Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Spurverts with me, Jack Bryden. I'm here with my good friend Greg Stobart from Squawker. How are you doing, pal? I'm very good, thanks, Jack. Excellent. So we'll just get cracking, I suppose. Um, let's talk about the Sunderland result from Sunday. Um, let me know what you think, your thoughts on the game, um, areas in which maybe we could have improved, areas in which you think we did well. It was a 1 0 thrashing, really, wasn't it, it Jack? Was. I think it was really impressive by Tottenham after. The disappointment of the Monaco performance, the manager went after the team as well. They needed the response, changed the team a lot, so he made a statement there as well. And I think it worked and really we should be sitting here talking about a 4-5-0 or five nil yeah. victory. It was more comprehensive than the Stoke game even, really. So encouraging performance, created loads of chances, loads of shots. Players who are coming into the side, Tizoko did all right, Son was absolutely excellent. The disappointment is, one, they didn't take the chances. Mm -hmm should have scored the goals and even the last five minutes you're wondering whether Sunderland might score a goal out of nowhere and Harry Kane's injury because he might not have had the greatest season so far but scored in the last two Premier League games and it looks like he's going to be out for a while and he's going to miss some massive fixtures as well. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that were saying that Kane should have been rested before this game. Um, obviously, Vincent Janssen could have been brought in. I know you're not really the biggest fan of Vincent Janssen but what do you reckon of that thing? Obviously, Kane got his goal but then got injured. Do you think he would have been better off being rested before this game? or? Well, you look at the way he got injured, I don't think it's anything to do with fitness levels, yeah. really. I mean, seeing Dembele and Dyer do their hamstrings or feel their hamstrings, that you might associate more with overplaying too many games. Dyer's played every game last season mm -hmm. as well, and the Euros as well. With Kane, it's just a real freak injury. It's unlucky, yeah. and I don't think Janssen looked ready to start, to be honest. He certainly didn't do anything when he came on against Monaco to suggest that he should be taking Harry Kane's place in the side, but he's going to get a run now. He's probably going to get a couple yeah. of months in the team now, so massive massive opportunity for Vincent Janssen, but you know, a few Spurs fans, everyone loves Harry Kane, of course, but starting to get a little bit worried about him this mm. season because of his form, but we might find out just how good he is because we're going to miss him without him, aren't we? Yeah, massively. I mean, you know, he's got two goals already this time last season. He hadn't scored um, a goal already. Yeah. So, I mean, that's good. But now, obviously, he's out for, for, I think it's six to eight weeks now, which is quite worrying. He could miss some important fixtures, which we'll get on to in a bit. Um, but Janssen coming into the team. I don't know if I necessarily agree with you that much on Janssen. Um, I think his hold-up play is great. Um, he's a big stocky striker. His feet, I noticed against Monaco, his feet are quicker than I thought they would be as well. There was a, a period out on the edge of the box where he jinked it around a couple of players. I think maybe this run of games is just what he needs. Yeah, well, I think a couple of things I'd say about Janssen. Firstly is he's a little bit too similar to Harry Kane in terms of athleticism, mobility, physique. Yeah. So maybe that counts against him because you see them together and I'm not sure they work as a two. You'd yeah. rather see sort of a quicker striker next to Harry Kane, for example. He's had a couple of good performances. I thought he was good against Crystal Palace, even though he missed the sitter. Changed the game a little bit against Everton, came on and made a difference. And it's very early days. I mean, you give everyone a season. We're seeing that with Son already. Yeah. We've seen it with Lamella. We've seen it with other players in the past. Uh, he's got ability and he's top scorer in all Europe, in the whole of Europe, all European leagues last season. So yeah. he's clearly got the ability. But I think ideally you ease him in. You play him against Gillingham, you keep bringing him off the bench yeah. and you ease him in to the Premier League because it's such a culture shock. He's only 21, remember. As well, and now we're at a situation. You know, Kane carried everything on his shoulders for the whole of last season, yeah. and for the next couple of months at least, it's going to be Janssen doing the same job because there's no one else who really who can play up front on their own. Or well, arguably, Son potentially. Could well, he do that did it a job, couple of times last season. It didn't work really. Yeah, I know. And obviously, he's playing so well on the on the flank. And that's his position as well because yeah. Son, you know, Son nearly left, mm -hmm. and he, he had a conversation with Pochettino and the management, and he said he wants to play and he wants to play on yeah. the left cutting in and he's showing why because two brilliant goals against Stoke yeah. and I thought he was even better against Sunderland. He could have scored a, a similar goal as well cutting in from the left. He hit the post yeah. um, at the weekend. So yeah, I mean, look, he's he's massively improved on, you know, he's been, he's been given an, an ultimatum really in a sense that we give you the chance. If you take it, then yeah, then, then we'll play you. Um, but we'll move on to Sun in a minute. Um, something we don't really, we've we touched on it just then, is Kane's injury. Now, after Kane um, done his ankle in, um, Twitter went mental saying they don't think Vincent Janssen's going to be ready to come in. There was a lot of people um, really worried, really. It almost went into meltdown. Um, so they're saying today um, that it could be six to, eight, six to eight weeks. Luckily, it's not broken. Yeah. Uh, I saw pictures of his ankle and it looked really nasty, didn't it? So it was almost doubled over. Um, it's suspected ankle ligament damage. Yeah, so... Uh he had two scans on Monday. By the time people watch this, we'll probably know officially what the result is. He had an X-ray, 
but he showed he wasn't broken. Then he had an MRI scan to mm -hmm. reveal the extent of ligament damage. Apparently, it's, it was so sw so swollen, it looked absolutely ridiculous when he had the scan, according to people at Tottenham. And right. they're expecting two months, which means he's going to miss Man City, he's going to miss Leicester, he's going to miss Bayer Leverkusen, CSK, Moscow. He's probably going to miss the North London derby yeah, that's against the, Arsenal, uh, November the 6th, I yeah. think that is. So I think, you know, unless he makes a really good recovery, it's probably going to be too soon. So awful news for mm. Harry Kane. And like you said before, we know he's a streaky player. And once he gets his comp, he starts slowly. And once he gets going, he's flying and he's scored. They were tappings, but he scored two in two weeks yeah. in the league and a really disappointing time to get injured. Yeah, it's, it's massively disappointing. So we wish you uh, all the best, Harry Kane, in, in your recovery. Um, a bit more positive news uh, his son's massive improvement over the last few weeks. Last season, he made just 13 Premier League starts. Um, and this season, he scored two against Stoke. He played awesome against Sunderland at the weekend. Um, I don't know what you thought he played, how you thought he played against Monaco midweek. I thought he played relatively well, and I thought he would have been a little bit disappointed to have been brought off at half time. But I think to bring Dembele on at half time, you'd have had to bring either him or the Mello off anyway. Yeah. Well, I think the Monaco game, he was almost a scapegoat. We saw Pochettino yeah. go after them with the um, lack of passion and stuff. And I think actually Pochettino made a mistake in his team selection against Monaco right. by playing Deli Ali yeah, in that yeah, position. That. So he probably should have started Dembele or Wanyama or even Wanyama. Just you know, let's let's mm. keep it solid and get a nil nil at half time. He probably should have done it now. And then, like you said, once he corrected it, it had to be Son or Lamella. Lamella kind of can be get, they can both be game changers, yeah. changers really. But certainly he looks better. He looks sharper. They always said give him the first season. Remember, he didn't have a pre season last mm. year because he joined right before the transfer window. Then he had the Olympics got in the way this summer. You know, I thought it was a really good opportunity, but Spurs sold. They had to sell themselves to Son a little bit yeah. to convince him to stay because Wolfsburg came in with his massive offer and he wanted to play every week. And if people in Germany think he's absolutely brilliant. That's why Wolfsburg were yeah. in for him in the first place, and he's showing it really. We know he can score goals, which is important because you know, we're looking a bit thin without Kane. Certainly, yeah. how many proven goal scorers now are there? Ericsson, know. you know, Chadley's gone. Who? would score goal, you know, he's a goal five. scorer. So it's only Ericsson who scored more than 10 goals in a Premier League season. And Son's certainly capable of doing that. So in, unless Janssen hits the ground running, you might be looking to Son as the main yeah. goal scorer at the moment. So he could be massive in the next few weeks. Well, Deli Ali got 10 last season. Yeah, he did, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there, like you say, there's few and far between of all the natural goal scorers in the team. Um, he got man of the match against Sunderland at the weekend. Um, also, just to um, quickly just interject with this... Um, they let Bentaleb go off to Germany, but let but made Son stay. So that shows sort of Pochettino's thinking in that he values him so much, much more so than he did Bentaleb anyway, um, as a player. And you know, it, like I said before, he gives it. He's given him um, the chance to prove himself. Uh, he got man of the match against Sunderland at the weekend, and he just seems to be taking that opportunity, which is great to see. It's confidence as well, isn't yeah. it? You know, last year he was getting the ball head down, running into a defender. Mm. Now he's doing a step over, skipping yeah. past him and whipping a brilliant cross in. And a lot of it's confidence, a lot of it's coaching. Pochettino mm. always backs himself to improve players on training ground, which is massive. And I think that one of the big differences between Son and some of the players who might have left is you look at the Spurs social media stuff, Son's at the heart of a lot of it. Yeah. it you know, he's really popular, he's joking around with Deli Ali. he's good to have around the dressing room. So I think there were no concerns over that, over his work rate, over built buying into the team spirit. He wasn't gonna sit and moan. Yeah. He just wanted to play football. He's a good guy, you know, good lad as you know Harry Harry yeah. Redknapp used to say. So I think that's a big part of it as well. And we're seeing the need for the squad now, aren't we? Because mm -hmm. at the start of the season you would you would have easily written down Tottenham first choice yeah. starting eleven. Now you're thinking, well, is Ericsson in the starting eleven mm -hmm. anymore? Because you've got to play Son. Is Lamella in it? Because Sizoko's coming in and doing yeah. well. You know, you've got Wanyama. So does Wanyama play? Because he's done all right so far. Janssen's got a chance to stake his claim as well. So you're seeing the value of a bigger squad as well now. Yeah, and the competition's always healthy. And you know, it's, 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 it's brilliant to see that all these players are reacting to, to the chances that they're being given. So, yeah, that's great to see. Finally today, probably the best news um, of the week is that Deli Ali signed a new deal until 2022. Yeah, massive and it's this is the only one we weren't really expecting, isn't it? Yeah. All the other, you know, all the all the other contract news we've been expecting, there's a few more to come. Deli Ali only signed his last contract start of the year and that was a 5-year deal itself. So and I don't think there's any serious interest from other clubs in Deli Ali or certainly they wouldn't have any chance of signing him well, anyway. There's so. certainly 
sort of fends them off now, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's just, look, you have been so good, we're going mm. to reward you, we're going to give you a six-year contract, we're going to pay, we're going to double your wages mm -hmm. and show you how much we value you, which is Tottenham's philosophy as well, because they kind of got away with it for a couple of years, paying these brilliant players 35 grand a week. Yeah. You know, you've got er Ericsson, Ali, Dyer, all on, Harry Kane still on 35 grand a week. You've got all these players on pretty much not a lot of money in mm -hmm. comparison to what they would be earning elsewhere and Spurs have realised after last year we've got to reward all these players and Deli Ali he can be whatever he wants to be I know he's he's still having that young inconsistency a little bit but when he's, when he's on it he's an absolutely fantastic player Yeah I think these players also um, see where the money's coming in from these different avenues Champions League and, and the Premier League and that sort of thing they're going to start asking questions as to why they're not getting paid as much as sort of other players in the league are yeah. So I think it's good that we can afford to do that now. We're still not paying, you know, the mega yeah. bucks, which is good because you know we're saving a bit of cash, but still keeping these names because they can, they're buying into the future of this club, which is you know important as well. Yeah, I was at Pochettino's press conference the other week when he said exactly that. He said we can't pay as much money as Man United or Chelsea, mm. but we've got a great young squad. We were, we're building. We played good football. We were better last year. We got the best training ground. We're building this amazing new stadium. If you're a 21 year old, where else do you want to play? Yeah. It's a brilliant place to play. You're going to play often. You're not going to be, they're not going to buy some superstar to mm. take your place in the team. And he works on merit as well, Pochettino, and he's shown that in the past. And I think exactly right. Deli Ali, a year ago even, he hadn't made his first Premier League no. start yet, I don't think. So it shows how far you can come at the club as well. Well, since then, he's got, I've got here, goal of the season, PFA Young Player of the Year. He also got his, first, his England debut, which he scored on. He played all the games for us at the Euros as well, didn't he? Yeah. So over the last year, he's come on leaps and bounds and it's so good that we've managed to, to keep hold of him. Yeah. For such well, a long period of time as well. I think the six-year contract's a big yeah. one because you've seen a, you know, a couple of the others, four-year contracts. You know, Certainly if Lamella, Lloris, Vertonghen renew, it'll be four-year contracts. Yeah. But with Ali, because he's young as well, tied him down. Look, if he plays well, he carries on improving as he is. Spurs will give him another contract in a couple yeah. of years. That's how they operate. And, you know, Daniel Levy has broken the wage structure a little bit. So, you know, we were moaning a little bit about the transfer market and how they were being a bit cautious. But a lot of it was so they could invest funds or divert funds towards paying the players who are already here, yeah. who deserve more money. And rather than having a load of players on thirty to £50,000 a week, what we're going to find is the wage structure, most a lot of important key players between seventy and £80,000 a week. Yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. And it's keeping a structure, there's still not going to be a superstar earning £200,000 a week or £150,000 a week and ruining the team spirit. And that's yeah. massive because you've got to think about stuff like that. Yeah. Well, we just got to hope that the the ones who haven't signed their deals, so who have we got there? We've got Walker, Jan. Walker, Rose and... The Tongan are pretty much done. Yeah. I'd just wait for announcements on those okay. ones. The ones that are taking a bit of time. Harry Kane's close, but I don't know if the injury will affect anything. Yeah. I doubt it, but that was close. And then Lamella's a little bit tricky, and so is Hugo Lloris. Okay. They're the two ones. I think they're asking for a bit more money. Lloris is already on 80,000, so yeah. he's asking for a bit more money. But I think they're pretty confident of getting them all over the line, and they're going to go all out to make sure it happens. Yeah, fingers crossed we get to keep, keep this wonderful squad all in, in one piece without anyone throwing their toys out the pram. But anyway, that is it for this week's Spurverts. If you like it, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you've got any comments, then just put them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. And more importantly, come on you Spurs. Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred on, and it's another Monday edition of Five Things We Learn. And of course, this time, Five Things We Learned from Tottenham Hotspur 1, Sunderland 0 in the 4.30...